dialect to do something about it. Chip got the flow wide open if you got questions about it. Man, it's the show that brings you to your raw. To solve all problems, it starts with real talk. It's real talk. And here we go, here we go on this Monday, January 10th, 2022. And yes, it is the first new Real Talk Memphis broadcast of the new year. So I start off by wishing you a happy new year. Glad to have you with us. If you are with us this evening, gang's all here, ready up, fired up and ready to go. Hopefully we have a a good show for you tonight. You know, we always work hard to try to entertain you and educate you all at the same time. I am your humble host, Chip Washington. Uh, DJ Lola is here. Jack is here. I'm sure Nicole will be here shortly as well. I hope uh, since the last time we communicated, you are doing well. I hope you had a safe and wonderful entry into 2022 and that this is going to be your best year ever. We're all pulling for each other to have a great 2022. Now, uh, before we get too far, let's deal with the business at hand as to how you can get this fine piece of radio broadcasting. Well, you can do it a couple of three ways, actually. We are on live right now, 91.7 WYXR. On your FM dial, we are also on the uh, app, the uh, the uh, WYXR.org website. We are on, hit the listen live, and you'll be able to hear us. We are also on the TuneIn app, and we are on uh, Facebook Live, if you are so interested. And... Uh, as this show is a podcast, it will be posted to all podcast platforms sometime tomorrow afternoon. You good? Good. We have a lot to get to tonight. Uh, we have, uh, as I said earlier, a pretty uh, good show. If you ever want to know who's going to be on this broadcast before it's on, go to my web, uh, go to my Facebook page, and I always do a nice little promo uh, with photos of everyone who is going to be in attendance tonight. But I will tell you that. Uh, uh, Tanera George Gibson, who is the newly named president of the Memphis Bar Association and the first woman of color to hold that position, is on the broadcast here in just a few minutes. Also, uh, Jason Farmer, he is the president and CEO of BLP Film Studios. And that sounds familiar to you. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's about to make a big splash, uh, not only in Memphis and Shelby County, uh, a little later this year with a sprawling entertainment facility that he is going to talk to us about. And a bit later on in the broadcast, in the second half hour, now last we were with you a couple of weeks ago, we were scheduled to have Wendy Moulton with us. Well, she had some, uh, uh, some uh, issues arise uh, that prevented her from being with us. But I am proud to say that uh, she is going to join us tonight. So if you want to hear uh, about Wendy's uh, great experience on the uh, hit uh, TV show, The Voice. Uh, stay tuned uh, to the second half hour of the broadcast. Now, uh, as we always do right at the top, I uh, always want to celebrate uh, you uh, in terms of your birthdays and your anniversaries or your special occasions. But we can't do that until I say, hit it, Jack. Happy Every event deserves its own theme song, so that's what this is all about. So let's get into it, shall we? How about it? Happy birthday is going out to Natalie Long. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Lamont Matthews, Marion Parrish, Amy Houston Chafin. Happy birthday to you. Also, Eden Ash, Eden Esh, rather. Happy birthday. Allison Brownlee, it's your birthday today. 
Gwen Sachs, happy birthday. Deborah Austin Benson, happy birthday to you. Adama Pryor, Stacy Hawkins Adams, Joyce McKinney, Tammy Cox Redmond, Jessica Galloy Trounsell. And I want to wish a happy belated birthday to one of our show producers, Nicole Covington. Nicole celebrated her birthday this past Saturday, or as Lola likes to say, happy soul day. See, I, you know, I, I must not, I'm not with it. So, you know, I get these, these new little fresh, you know, slices of information from her. So uh, happy, happy soul day to Nicole. And coming up this Friday, you know, the show you heard right before our show, Riding in Rhythm, the great host of that show, Jim Duckworth, is celebrating his 65th birthday on this coming Friday. So, happy born day to you, Jim. Uh, celebration uh, overload. And to each and every one of you, and also to all of you born in January, a very, very happy birthday to each and every one of you. I'm glad you made it around the sun, that trip around the sun to get to this point. And we hope to celebrate with you again next year. Thank you, Jack. A lot of birthdays in uh, January and the first of the year and as we march on down the road. Good to be back with you all tonight. Uh, let's jump into a few news and notes before we uh, uh, entertain our, our first guest in just a few minutes. Well, uh, you know, uh, whether or choose, you choose to want to talk about this or hear about it or not, you know, this thing called the Omicron variant has completely dominated and taken over Shelby County as it has the entire country. Uh, it's spreading like wildfire. There's like over 700 new cases a day on average now, 1,600 deaths per average, hospitalizations and deaths are on the rise. Of course, hospitals, uh, especially here in Shelby County, are strained. And it's tough to keep staff. You know, people are sick. People are getting sick every day. And uh, in the school systems, there's like three to 4,000 children who are sick in the various districts, which reminds me that Collierville announced late this afternoon that they are going to go back to remote learning uh, for a short period of time until things sort of calm down a bit. This is really, really crazy stuff. We're averaging between two and 3,000 new cases a day here in Shelby County. You heard me. Between two and 3,000 new cases uh, a day. Uh, and uh, so now the, now the hope is that it'll plateau at some particular point, and when it plateaus or reaches its peak, that it will slowly start to, the numbers will slowly start to come down. I can tell you right now, testing is just, uh, is, is crazy. A lot of folks testing out there. A lot of folks uh, getting in line, long lines. Uh, there's staffing issues in terms of testing as well. Uh, but you should get your vaccinations. If you don't have your vaccinations or you do have your vaccinations, get that booster. If you don't have your vaccinations, it's never too late to get it. It's your choice. Choose wisely because from what I'm to what I'm to understand, uh, if you have not been vaccinated, you don't want to catch Omicron because it's a pretty tough deal for each and every person. Okay, so that's your reminder. This is still real and it's still out there, and we all have to take precautions. Yeah, mask. Yeah, see the mask. Yeah, we all have masks around here. Everybody's wearing masks, and you should wear your mask too. Let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, uh, a lot of folks have been talking about uh, Young Dolph and, uh, you know, his, his murder here in town. I don't know if you heard about it or not, but apparently there is a person of interest that the police are f- trying to locate. Uh, his name is Justin Johnson, and they are saying that he is one of the two individuals responsible for pulling the trigger that uh, killed uh, Young Dolph. On November 17th, Uh, he is now on the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation's most wanted list. He's being looked for everywhere. Now, there was also uh, an issue that uh, many people were talking about that apparently he posted something on social media uh, that's saying that uh, he was innocent uh, and that he was going to turn himself in. Now, since as of uh, six o'clock this evening, he hadn't done that yet. One would assume that may not have been him, but the manhunt is on uh, for one of the killers of Young Dolph. We will keep you posted on that as well. Uh, the current police chief of uh, the city of Memphis, uh, Chief Davis, 
experienced uh, local crime firsthand over the weekend. Apparently, she was out and about with a friend. And uh, <clears throat> as they walked into uh, wherever they were going, they came out to find that the car had been broken into, glass everywhere. There was a backpack in the car. Inside the backpack were several items, including a secondary weapon of Chief Davis's that was actually in a locked box inside the backpack. Well, uh, the the uh, police found the backpack a little bit later on, but has not found the weapon. Uh, now she has been a, a victim of a local crime, and of course, she's not very happy about that. And uh, you know, it 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 it, it's, it it takes some, it does something to you when you when you become a victim of a crime. And uh, you know, she's angry, and she understands even more so. Um, you know how you feel when something like this happens, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be a deep dive because. The person stole her weapon, and um, heaven forbid, uh, that weapon uh, is used in the commission of a crime. So we will, uh, you know, hope, 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 hope that uh, they find uh, that weapon and the individual who took it and deal with them accordingly. All right, for you sports fans out there, uh, the last uh, day of uh, football season, the NFL I'm speaking of, it's also a very interesting day in terms of uh, what I like to call Bloody Monday because there's always firings after the season is over. And, uh, yeah, there's been plenty since, uh, since Saturday. Uh, so uh, for you fans of the Dolphins, the Chicago Bears, the Denver Broncos, and the Minnesota Vikings, you're looking for a new head coach. And a couple of those teams, you're also looking for a new GM as well. The only surprise on that is the Miami Dolphins because I actually thought that um, uh, that Brian Flores uh, was doing pretty good. They won yesterday, and then he wakes up this morning uh, to find out that he no longer has a job. So we will see who replaces them as uh, we uh, get into the playoffs and soon the championship of the NFL. But tonight, uh, is the national championship of college football between the University of Georgia Bulldogs and the Alabama Crimson Tide. And uh, I'll ask you who you got in that game tonight. But uh, I will tell you who I got. And I'm hoping that uh, after getting spanked a few weeks ago by Alabama, Georgia actually shows up and plays a good game tonight. So go Georgia Bulldogs. Before I leave, um, we had a few notable deaths since the last time uh, we were all in studio together. Uh, Betty White, uh, the actress, she lived to be 99 years old. She died just before, she died on New Year's Eve, as a matter of fact. Uh, Sidney Poitier, uh, the uh, fine actor, first uh, black man to win an Academy Award for Lilies of the Field in 1964. He passed away a couple of days ago. And yesterday, Bob Saget, Many of you uh, who uh, remember the show Full House, uh, he was the father on Full House, and he was also the host of America's Funniest Home Videos. He died yesterday at the age of 65. And um, back to the sports news for a quick minute. John Madden, uh, former NFL uh, World Championship coach for the Oakland Raiders, a spokesperson, a broadcaster, he died uh, over the last couple of weeks uh, at the age of 85. So uh, may there all of their memories uh, be a blessing to each and every one of us. All right, well, that's it for the news and notes uh, on this first edition of this new year. We're going to take our first commercial break, and when we come back, we are going to get things started. This is Real Talk Memphis. I am your humble host, Chip Washington. We will be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back.
The Brooks is open in Overton Park, home to Memphis Art Collection since 1916. The Memphis Brooks Museum of Art holds the largest collection of world art in the region, with more than 10,000 works spanning 5,000 years of art and cultures. Remember, every Wednesday is free and open until 8 p.m. They are a proud sponsor of WYXR. For more information about the museum and their exhibitions, visit brooksmuseum.org. You belong at the Brooks. West College is now accepting applications for the fall 2022 semester. Located in Holly Springs, Mississippi, and just minutes away from Memphis, Russ College offers degree programs in business, education, math, science, and much more. Call 662-252-8000, extension 4043 for more details. Russ College hosts its spring high school preview day, February 16, 2022. For more information, it's on our website at russcollege.edu. Russ College, where tomorrow's leaders are students today. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday, the... First Monday, we're back in the new year, so we wish you all a very happy new year on this January 10th, 2022. And, you know, we were talking uh, during the break a minute ago, you know, that we're still celebrating first um, in, in various categories in, in the 21st century, which is still a little nutty to me. But I am very, very happy to have my first guest on for this new year. Uh, she uh, has uh, recently been selected as the first black female president of the Memphis Bar Association in its history. Her name is Tanera George Gibson. And Tanera, thank you so much for coming on the show and Happy New Year again. Tanera, are you there? Here, can you hear me? I got you now. I got you now. Okay. I got you okay. now. All right. Well, and first of all, from all of us here and from everyone, I know you've been getting congratulations. So uh, once again, congratulations on uh, this very prestigious honor, Madam President. Uh, <laughs> and uh, and I guess first and foremost, uh, how does it make you feel? You know, we, we were talking a minute ago about, you know, we're still dealing with first. And obviously you're the first, which means you're a trailblazer. Uh, which means you are sort of setting the bar, if you will. How does how does all this make you feel um, in, in in terms of, of of this role that you're taking on? Um, that's kind of loaded, Chip. But yeah, I I, <laughs> I'll say that um, I mean it makes me feel like it's a step in the right direction, yeah. but doesn't feel like progress yet. Okay. Um, and and by that I mean you know it's you know let's see. I don't want it to be me, and then. 25 more years before there's another Mm -hmm. black woman who's president. Mm -hmm. So whatever has gotten us to this place, I want to address head on. Um, You know, I want to kind of deal with it, work those kinks out and see if we can't, you know, make diversity the norm uh, among the lawyers here in Memphis. That's a very interesting uh, thing you just said and a way to look at it. And, and, you know, hopefully it's not the exception to the rule, but you know, it, it will be the norm. Um, so, you know, I'm sure that you have uh, you have an agenda and some things that you're thinking about as you're moving forward uh, in, in, during this year. But let me back up a minute. First of all, how old is the Memphis Bar Association? How long has it been established? For 147 years. 147 years. OK. And, 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 and once again, you're the first. 147. Uh, so uh, <laughs> and I, I had to ask that question because. It really is, you know, I don't know, a bit stunning that we're still dealing with things like this. But uh, as we as we move forward, may I ask about you personally in terms of your legal background and career? How long have you been in the legal profession? Uh, I went to let me see. I've been I'm in my I graduated from law school 14 years ago. I had to think about it. This okay. is my second career. OK. Um, so I went back to law school when I was 27, came out when I was. 29, almost 30. And, um, and so now here I am, uh, my degree, I have a degree in computer science. So I tried that first. I hated it. And, um, 
but this is what I truly believe I, I'm meant to do. This is this is this is where you this is the place you need to be. Uh, if you're just joining us, ladies and gentlemen, we are speaking with Tanera George Gibson. She is the president of the Memphis Bar Association. You know, I've seen you on a lot of newspapers, a lot of magazines and things like that. And and uh, obviously very, very proud of you and your accomplishments. Uh, speaking of that, uh, as we move forward now, um, you know, what are you looking at? What are some of the things you're looking at? You know, what does the agenda look like as you move forward uh, as this year starts to progress? So obviously diversity is a big one, but you know, you have to get there, right? And so I'm very intentional about um, trying to create a set of diverse leaders within the bar. I want there to be, you know, some longevity to it. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be a passing fad during, you know, my year as president. I want to create something that's sustainable uh, going forward. You know, the bar has, you know, tremendous resources. There are thousands of lawyers who are members. Um, some member, all kinds of lawyers that practice in all kinds of areas. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, I want to harness the resources for all of us. And, and, and that should be, in my view, the norm. And part of what I want to do is to, you know, to kind of give some students, up and coming students, you know, an opportunity to hone their leadership skills before they come out. We're developing a program for that. Um, to give them some advantage or level the playing field a little bit. When I came out of uh, when I went to law school, I, there was one lawyer in my family. I, I didn't have any idea about anything, you know, and I just ended up with really good mentors. And I just kind of want to, you know, impart that, you know, the wisdom that us, many of us have gained over the years. So, you know, so do you, so, you know, you talked about, uh, you know, kind of, kind of setting the mark and, and, and making this, uh, you know, more of the norm, you know, and, and using all of the, the, the resources uh, that come along uh, with the, the, the title and the position uh, uh, that you hold. Um, do you think uh, as a whole, um, and you said there are thousands and thousands of lawyers here in, uh, you know, that are, that are part of the, the Bar Association, is that going to be a challenge? Is it going to be is it going to be an uphill battle? Do you think, or do you think that we are at a time and at a place now where people are starting to realize uh, that uh, your experience, your professionalism, and your credentials matter, uh, and that we all should try to get on a get on the same page, if you will? I really don't expect it to be an uphill battle, and that's not me being naive, Chip. I was actually pretty overwhelmed by the amount of support and positivity I've received up to this point from all kinds of lawyers and, and you know, in every, you know, imaginable practice area, demographic, mm -hmm. you know, just it, it's been overwhelming. And so I think that I could call on just about anyone to, to do some of the work we want to do, and I probably will call on a whole lot of people to do the work. And I, I just, I don't I really don't see it being an uphill battle, to be honest with you. I think people are ready for it. Well, you know, I, I think, you know, we we have moved, uh, we have we have started to move forward in, in, in a lot of categories. And, and this one, we don't necessarily, you know, really, really think about. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Was the person uh, who preceded you, was was was, was he Asian? Did, 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 am, am I right about that? Yes. And he was the first Asian president of the bar. So 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 the wheel is starting to turn a little bit here. Is that, is, is that that's is, is that is that a fair assessment that the wheel is starting to turn a little bit here? I, I think so. That's the hope. And I think that, you know, I it's that for when I first finished the that particular bar association did have a bit of a feeling of exclusivity. And, you know, I think that's changed over the years. And so trying to continue to change that like I said, so that this is sustainable. So I think the wheel is turning in the right direction. In terms of the dynamics uh, and uh, sort of the breakdown, uh, it, 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 all, it always seems uh, that it is a male-dominated profession. But as you, you know, as you communicate with others, you know, here and around the, the country, are more women uh, becoming involved uh, in terms of being a part of the legal process? Are we seeing more attorneys, not just you know, female attorneys, not just here, but, but nationwide, do you think? Yeah, there are definitely um, a growing number of, you know, women lawyers generally across the country. Uh, our numbers are definitely growing. Mm -hmm. Minority women, mm -hmm. not so much. 
But women generally, yes, the numbers are, and I just looked at these numbers. So the numbers are definitely increasing overall, but we have a lot of work to do when it comes to increasing the numbers among minority women. And now, now why do you think that is? I mean, when you look at the, you just said you just looked at the numbers and, and, and you see the, the, you know, the separation there. Why do you think it, it is uh, uh, in, in terms of a lack of African-American or black females? Um, I think it's that this is not, I'm not what you think about when you think about who a lawyer is. I'm not sitting in front of you, a black woman with my hair braided is not who you picture when you picture a lawyer. Mm. And that's something we have to overcome out the door. We mm. don't, people don't assume we're competent. People assume we're someone's secretary. People, assume, and, and this is true of women generally, actually. Um, people, but particularly for minority women, in my experience, people assume that you don't belong there, mm. you know, that you're not smart and that you have to go a long way to prove that you actually are competent to do your job. And so you kind of start behind some and you feel it the entire time you're doing this until you get to a place like now, I don't really feel like that anymore, but it's taken a long time to. Wow. That, you know, that, and that's a, and that's a, that's a real grain of truth. I think that people need to hear because, you know, I mean, there are still, we, we're still dealing with, you know, issues like that, race issues, gender issues uh, in right. this country and, and, and a lot of different categories. And, and what you just said really, really strikes a chord. Um, and, and, I, and, and I also sense that this is why you being the head of this, uh, this, this group um, is, is, is really important. And it really sort of sets the mark, you know, for for because I think a lot of people are going to be watching. And I think, you know, you sort of alluded to that a little bit as well, um, you know, kind of see how you do what you do. And it's not just a title thing only, but there's some meat behind it. So do you feel that way? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I have a pretty strong, tremendous agenda, so I might have to temper my ambition a little bit. <laughs> OK, um, but I'm not the least bit deluded about the fact that people are waiting to see what I'm going to do for all the obvious reasons, but you know, I'm ready for it. I welcome it. I'm looking forward to it, you know, um, and I'm grateful for it. Well, I got to tell you, you know, this has been really, you know, when I, when I first heard about it, I was, I was really excited um, um, for you and, 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 uh, and, and the profession as a whole, because I think you'll make it better. And, and having had this conversation with you, I know you will, you know, you will make it better and you're going to set some standards that, that some folks are going to have to follow down the road. So I want to thank you, Tanera George Gibson, newly elected. I appreciate you, Chip. New, new, newly, new, were you elected? Can I say elected yeah. or do you, how's that it's work? It's technically an elected position, yes. Okay. Newly elected president of the Memphis Bar Association. Kudos, kudos, and congratulations uh, to you. And uh, if you feel free, you feel free to come back on this show, if there's some something that you want to break out in terms of, you know, a, a new initiative or a program or, or something that uh, you think folks want to know, you're always welcome back here on Real Talk Memphis. Well, I certainly appreciate it. Thanks, uh, Chip. Have a great night. Talk to you soon. All right, you too. Okay, Thanks. Bye. Well, that was great. Uh, first, uh, the first out of the box there, uh, Tanera George Gibson, and you can tell she's a she's a very smart and dynamic woman who is, uh, as she said, the new elected president of the Memphis Bar Association, and she is going to make some changes, and I believe they're going to be for the better. So I thank her very much for coming on the show. We're going to take our next break. When we come back, uh, we are going to uh, talk to, uh, hopefully, Mr. Jason Farmer. Uh, he is the CEO of uh, BLP Film Studios, and uh, we're very excited to hear about uh, his, uh, his, 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 his big project, so to speak. I'm not going to say any more about it. I'm going to a break. This is Real Talk from Memphis. I'm your humble host, Chip. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest or have a guest idea? Then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. The University of Memphis is proud to be a founding partner of WYXR. 
They've recently been named an R1 institution by the Carnegie Classification of Institutions of Higher Education, putting the U of M in the top tier of research universities nationally. This milestone solidifies the university as one of two flagship public institutions in Tennessee. More information at memphis.edu. Russ College is now accepting applications for the fall 2022 semester. For more information, visit russcollege.edu or contact admissions at 662-252-8000, extension 4043. Rust College, where tomorrow's leaders are students today. The University of Memphis is proud to be a founding partner of WYXR. They have recently been named an R1 institution by the Carnegie Classification of Institutions of Higher Education, putting the U of M in the top tier of research universities nationally. This milestone solidifies the university as one of the two flagship public institutions in Tennessee. More information at memphis.edu. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday evening. Very happy to have you along for the ride. And, uh, you know, first of all, let me set this up by saying a lot of us enjoy entertainment. A lot of us enjoy movies and television shows and concerts and music and a lot of things such as that, right? And uh, so uh, the, my, my next guest is, is a man with a vision. He's a very well-known Memphian. He's a, he's a man with a vision and has had it for a while, and uh, he is going to basically um, put the biggest, I guess, spotlight, if you will, this is a showbiz analogy, uh, on the city of Memphis uh, and the Whitehaven community in, uh, in particular. I'm going to let him talk all about it. He is Jason Farmer. He's the president and CEO of BLP Film Studios. And Jason, Happy New Year, and thanks for coming to Real Talk. Man, thank you for having me, Chip. Happy New Year to you as well. And I hope you enjoyed your holiday break and ready for 2022. Man, yes, sir, indeed. We are all ready for 2022, and I know you are as well. And, uh, you know, uh, I want to talk a little bit about this this really tremendous and sprawling project uh, that you had a vision for. I want to talk a little bit about your vision and, um, you know, how it came to pass and what you are trying to create uh, here in Memphis and Shelby County in terms of the entertainment aspect of things. Well, so Chip, it, it, it really evolved um, uh, from our son, uh, Jason and second, J2. Okay. Um, he's currently a junior at Morehouse College now. Okay. Communications major and minoring in uh, film. Um, when he was about 10 years old, he started saying he wanted to be a filmmaker. Um, I come out of government, um, military background, law enforcement, had no inclination what it took uh, to make a movie or, or what that, even being in that sector entailed. Mm -hmm. So to be quite honest, we, we tried to dissuade him for several years, um, <laughs> but he, he was persistent. Okay. He stuck to it. Uh, we tried to introduce him to some other friends and family who were in various other careers that we knew the pathway for mm -hmm. those careers. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was adamant that he wanted to be a filmmaker. And so really, um, about seven or eight years ago, out of frustration, I just posted on Facebook, hey, anybody in the film and TV space that I may know, please reach out, inbox me, I have some questions. Wow. And uh, Christy Taylor, who uh, Christy and I have been friends now probably 25, 30 years. Yeah. Uh, Christy had been gone for several years and relocated to L.A. Right. And she was a screenwriter. Mm -hmm. So Christy Taylor reached out to me and was like, hey, Jason, what's going on? And I explained my dilemma to her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Christy literally started to send me out to people to say, hey, go see person A, go see person B. Mm -hmm. I became a grip. I became the sound guy. I became the stand-in. I think I've done every, every uh, facet of filmmaking um, just in an effort to learn 
uh, about the industry and, and, and ways that we could create opportunities for Jason or also just for the greater Memphis community. Right. Um, I also uh, did a lot of volunteer work with the International Black Film Festival in Nashville uh, with Miss Hazel uh, Joyner there. Mm -hmm. And all of these things, is, is the more and more I got involved, although I've been in the government sector for a number of years, I'd actually gone to school for business and pre-law. So I was looking at it not from a creative or a content creative creator's lens, but I was looking at it from a business standpoint. Okay. And I started to look at some of the history on why the market had moved away from Memphis, what were some of the emerging opportunities, and if there was an opportunity for Memphis that, that situated or positioned Memphis better than other places um, for a reemergence of the film and TV industry here in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And soon mm -hmm. what began to emerge is that um, there are a number of studies that are being conducted now by, um, you have the Bunch study at UCLA, I think Netflix does a study now, um, Warner Brothers, um, and, and, and we have McKissie and Company, and what these companies and these various universities have done, Ship, is that they've gone out and they've quantified um, the impact of people of color on the film and TV industry. Okay. So that now they know that we have empirical data that's been gathered over a five-year period that shows that people of color buy the most tickets, listen to the most radio shows, download the most content, influence the most content, and yet we're the most underrepresented in front of and behind the camera. Okay. And so um, and then you kind of fast forward to last summer and where a, a, a large um, percentage of the population watched uh, George Floyd be executed on television. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of, for lack of a better word, kind of reignited this, this awareness around um, diversity, equity and, equity and inclusion mm -hmm. and, and the lack thereof. And so you had all of these major corporations start to make commitments and, and they kind of took a refreshed look at what they were doing, how they were engaging people of color. Uh, and particularly as it relates in the entertainment industry, Warner Brothers was one of the first, uh, Warner Media was one of the first companies to come out and actually implemented policy that said that um, people of color had to be interviewed for positions. We had to, they, the, the company was making a conscious effort to get more involvement in front of and behind the camera in all aspects um, of film and TV creation. Others, other uh, corporate entities soon followed. But what was happening is um, um, all of these things were kind of happening at, at simultaneously. Yeah. And the film and TV industry, even today in, in 2022, is about 90 to 95% male white dominated, hmm. uh, particularly when you're looking at the business side of, of, of this equation. And so, you know, therein lies the problem. You know, you have done business in a certain way for over 200 years. So it does not just manifest itself that you're gonna invite other people to the table. Right. So kind of taking the page from um, Tyler Perry in Atlanta, when a couple of years ago, he said, you know, while other people are out asking for a seat at the table, he was going to be in Atlanta building his own table. Right. And so pulling a page from that, we looked at and, and we did some uh, some really in-depth uh, cost analysis on what it would cost to build and operate a film studio here in the Memphis market. Mm -hmm. uh, Memphis in Shelby County happens to be the largest majority black suburban area in the entire country. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that. So really, if you come here and, and you're truly committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion, you really, really, really have to go out of your way in this market for that not to happen. That's... So we looked around and, and we, we were able to acquire the initial 100 acres of land. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an option on another parcel of land that's about 100 acres also. Um, we've managed to get that property uh, successfully rezoned um, through the Land Use Control Board, the Shelby County Commission, uh, the, the uh, Memphis City Council, 
and we and also we had some assistance from the governor's office and we now have that property is completely um, rezoned as commercial mixed use um, we've submitted a density plan that uh, spans about 1.5 million square feet of space um, encompassing about 14 sound stages administrative office buildings post-production facilities editing suites uh, outdoor sinks um, a full production studio you, and we're, now, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just. I'm really sitting here in awe, listening to you to talk a little bit about all this, and, and so is my crew, by the way. But um, and, and by the way, for those of you who are just joining us, shame on you. But this this is a podcast, so you'll be able to catch it if you missed any of it. We are speaking with Mr. Jason Farmer. He is the president and CEO of BLP Film Studios, and walking us through the process of building uh, an amazing studio complex here, here in Memphis and Shelby County, Whitehaven specifically. And, you know, you and I spoke uh, offline, uh, Jason, a couple of times uh, uh, prior to you coming on tonight. And I think one of the things that is very important to you is that uh, people of color have opportunities and not only have opportunities to work in this environment, but also people who are you know, who are looking for for for, for a first chance, uh, just an opt- whether they be musicians, whether they be actors, whether they be supporting folks, and that's very important to you, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, th- this project, um, just the scope of the project, is one of the largest uh, black-led commercial projects, private commercial projects um, in history mm-hmm. that that we've been able to find. So. We certainly equate this um, to what the Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport meant to the Atlanta region. When um, Mayor Jackson was was mayor of Atlanta, um, he he just laid down the gun mm-hmm. that at a minimum there was going to be thirty to forty percent minority participation in the building of that multi-billion dollar project at that time at Hartsfield International Jackson International Airport. Right. That one project alone created untold amount of multi-millionaire uh, entrepreneurs in the Atlanta uh, uh, Fulton County area. Uh-huh. And so this project has the same kind of reach and magnitude uh, that we have the opportunity to really have an impact on the community here uh, for generations going forward, not just with the direct people that are involved in the in the in the studio, but the the engineers that will build it, the 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 contractors, uh, the various yeah. you know yeah. probably thirty or forty other ancillary things that will have to happen um, to make that studio happen. Uh, it's a twenty four hour operation. Um, it will it will directly impact thousands of jobs indirectly probably several other thousand thousand jobs as well mm-hmm. um and then i guess the biggest sector um aside from what will happen in front of and behind the camera is the music component mm-hmm. and oftentimes we don't really think about it but everything visual there's a music component to it sure so if your film has a a, a 20 million dollar budget or 50 million dollar budget Typically, about 10% of that is set aside for music. Okay. So for our local musicians, as we do, once we come online, we're doing 50 to 70 productions a year. We will need 1,500 to 1,700 pieces of music. Man. Um, <laughs> theme songs, yeah. just music that's, that's playing in the background. Um, and, and, and I encourage people as this studio comes online to look at the credits. When, when the news goes off, when your favorite program on Netflix goes off, when your favorite program on HBO, whatever you're watching, if you'll sit for an additional 10 minutes, every name that scrolls across that screen yeah. got paid. Yeah, sure. Excellent. Everything there. Yeah. So we focus so much on, on, on the actors who are on screen, but there are typically 150 to 300 names that scroll across that screen right. and everybody up there got paid. That's right. And so that's the kind of impact that we want to have on the, we'll have on the community. Not that we want to have, but we will have on the community. Well, listen, man, look, I, I you know, we, 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 we got to run, but I, 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 you know, you got, 
I'm telling you, I got three folks in the studio, <laughs> studio with me. Uh, you know, my, my 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 producer team here, and they're all like looking at me and shaking their head and giving me the thumbs up and the whole nine yards about what what this this is a very exciting project that you are bringing uh, to a a city and a county that desperately needs it, and it's going to help so many folks. And listen. Um, as uh, we get closer to this, and in particular the ground, groundbreaking aspect of it, come back on the show, and uh, you know, and we'll we'll chop it up a little bit more about uh, what is to come uh, from this amazing opportunity that you are providing us here in the city. Man, thank you for having me, Chip, and and I'll certainly be glad to come back. And you can follow us at blpfilmstudios.com, blpstudios.com, and that's how you do it. Jason Farmer, thank you so much, my friend, and uh, I look to talk to you soon. Thank you. All right, take care. Wow, that was enough. That doesn't make you feel something. I, I I don't know what will. I mean, Jason is 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 basically recrafting this entire landscape here. A multi, you know, million dollar uh, studio entertainment complex of television and film and music, and he wants to empower you. And us, all of us here, giving an opportunity to people who may have never thought they might not have gotten an opportunity, but a dream can turn into reality, as you heard him talk about that. I'm very excited for him and about this project as it moves forward. We're going to take our final break. And when we come back, guess what? Wendy Moulton is going to join us, uh, and she's going to talk about her great experience on the big hit uh, what music show called The Voice. This voice is Chip Washington. This show is Real Talk Memphis, and we will be right back. If you like Real Talk, here's a way you can get involved. Do you have a show topic idea or suggestion? Want to be considered a guest? or have a guest idea, then send Chip a message on his Real Talk show page and you can be a part of the Real Talk experience. So as he always says, go out and tell somebody. We'll be right back. By the Carnegie Classification of Institutions of Higher Education, putting the U of M in the top tier of research universities nationally. This milestone solidifies the university as one of the two flagship public institutions in Tennessee. More information at memphis.edu. The stuff that WYXR brings to the airwaves is already playing in the parking lots and basements where the next generation's journey is just getting started. And we can't imagine building the brands we do without the role music played in our lives. No matter what kind of art you make, music is what sets you on your path. Loaded for Bear is proud to support WYXR and community radio everywhere. Get Real Talk on the TuneIn mobile app under WYXR, and he's now streaming live on Facebook. And you can also catch a rebroadcast on YouTube. Just put WYXR in the search box and hit subscribe. Now back to more Real Talk with Chip Washington. And welcome back to Real Talk Memphis on this Monday, January 10th. And boy, I'm excited because uh, we have uh, someone here who has always been a star to us. I mean, you know, she's she's always been our number one. Uh, but if you have uh, you recently followed uh, the uh, hit uh, TV program, The Voice, the talent show, The Voice, you saw one of our very own on there. She was tearing it up too, man. And I tell you what, uh, at the end of the day, she came in uh, run up. She came in second. But she's number one in all of our hearts, ladies and gentlemen, Wendy Moulton. Wendy, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Chip, thank you for having me on your great show. And shoot, I might have to 
dial in to Mr. Farmer myself. Yeah, oh, get well, something going on. Well, that's a whole other conversation because he told me he needs to get in touch with you. So, <laughs> so Look, right there. <laughs> so we all gonna network on each other. We are gonna help each other out. Absolutely that. But listen, congratulations on 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 the voice. You were absolutely amazing, and it was a tremendous experience. Could you feel? The entire city and the county and everybody here in Memphis just pulling for you every week. Could you feel that energy? Absolutely. I felt it. I, okay, Memphis has always been behind me. I have to say that. It, from like Liberty Land days yeah. to <laughs> in the voices, Carlton League, and, you know, just on and on. Coming in out of the rain. I was at MVP at Captain Bilbo. Memphis has always been behind me. And so, I mean, when I got to the voice, I, would, I had no doubt. I had no doubt that they would support me, that my hometown would support me. Well, you know, when you when you get all four chairs turning around, which they did for you, and, and they were all begging to get you, what made you decide to, to uh, join Team Blake? Well, I have to tell you, I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I, you know, reality TV is its own universe. Yeah. I didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah. I had been working for 35 years. I wasn't sure if it was going to destroy what I've worked on for 35 years. Uh -huh. And I had made up my mind. I didn't know what kind of game this was going to be. But I figured if I just did my ultimate best, however the chips lie down, I was going to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. And and I was basically like, whoever turned around first, that's who I was going to go with because obviously I moved something in them. And I wasn't sure Blake would, would would get me or take a chance on me because, you know, I just wasn't sure, you know, and he didn't know much about me. Of course, you know, you're just blind auditions. Right. But uh, when I found out that he turned around first and then he blocked John Legend. Yep, you did. I said, oh, my God, what is this? What kind of game is this? <laughs> so, you know, I figured that that's just how it was supposed to be. Plus, you know, I've been in the game 40 years, so it's like. Okay, with Blake, I just got an idea that, you know, he's he's a brilliant artist and he is a brilliant, you know, person to play the voice. He knows the ins and outs of the voice. Sure. So I figured I would have a better chance of singing more of the songs that I love and I like uh, with someone like Blake because he's about authenticity. So, I, you know, not that my King John Legend or my queen Ariana Grande, yeah. or you know Kelly Clarkson. Not that they wouldn't try to put the right songs with me, yeah. but yeah. I think that I always felt like Blake would kind of respect, you know, if it's something that I felt strongly about, he may lean towards me a little bit. Wow, you know, trusting me, my instincts. Absolutely amazing. If you are just joining us, we're speaking with uh, the fantastic Wendy Moulton, uh, talking about her experiences on The Voice now. Wendy, you have been uh, doing a lot of uh, of music in the country and Western world. Uh, the country music you've been you've been you've been on stage with some of the biggest country acts uh, in, in the world. How did that come about? Um, I had to eat. You know, when I had my solo <laughs> when I had my solo career in the nineties, doing yeah. the Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey era, yeah, uh, era. Uh, you know, it lasted for about five years. Uh -huh. And then I was like, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And then Julio Iglesias found me and made me his duet partner. And that was like, I stayed with him for 15 years. I had to sing in four languages, you know, traveled in the private planes, oh, made my. crazy money. Oh. That whole private plane lifestyle. Yeah. That's what I experienced over 15 years. Yeah. And then, um, uh, and then, um, after that, um, uh, honey, I'm in an interview. <laughs> and then after that is when hello is hello. when um you know country music world opened up mm -hmm. and I got a call and the first tour was Tim McGraw Faith Hill yeah uh, arena tour and I was just gonna stay for a little while because Julio had a break and uh, and I called him and asked him if it was all right to you know go do this tour for one year and he was like darling darling you can go but come back come back come back. So, Come back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I stayed for, you know, one year. And then I, I went back to Julio Iglesias because he tours all over the world. Right. And, um, and then I came back. I was able to do them both. It worked out that way for many years. And then, you know, Tim and Faith, Winona, uh, Martina McBride, Vince Gill. Big man. And then, you know, touring with Vince Gill, he ended up doing a country record on me. 
a traditional country record. Mm -hmm. And I ended up playing the Grand Ole Opry like 10 times in the last two years. And I don't have a manager, an agent, a label, you, nothing. You got it going on. You got it <laughs> going on. You 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 really do. I mean, I mean, just to listen to you and to talk about it, and I mean, you're giving us musical history with some of the greatest uh, performers, you know, ever in 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 the world here. And to be seen by, uh, I mean, obviously you you've been on stages all over the world, thousands of people perform before thousands of people in concerts and things like that. Be on that stage uh, of The Voice and having millions of people each and every week watching you had to be kind of an out-of-body experience, but maybe not for somebody who's been doing it as long as you, huh? Well, for me, I knew because I've been doing it 35 years and because, like you said, I have worked with the greatest artists in music history, mm -hmm. I knew I had music still left in me and I knew I needed some some type of platform like the voice so when they accepted me I, I, that was a huge plus because I didn't know if they would say no because I had so much experience <laughs> so I had decided I didn't know how long I was going to stay on the show I don't know how they play this game I don't know how America's going to vote so I was just going to use it as my concert every week yeah every week you just at a Wendy Moden show because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I've just done too much <laughs> so that was, I, I was like, and however long I stay, that's just what it'll be. But I'll experience what it's like to just reach people, people I don't know, millions of people who never heard of me before. But I wanted the idea was to have them feel something different that they may not even be able to articulate. I have I had so many people, grown men reached out to me. I watched your performances over and over and I wept. I was like, that is what I wanted for people to feel, even if they remember my name or not. Man. I just wanted them to feel something different. I got to tell you something. Um, uh, as, 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 as we're about to wrap up here, I, I'm looking at my my uh, my, my uh, Facebook Live thing, and there are people on here saying, Wendy, we love you. Janet Chestnut, <laughs> I love you, Wendy. And, you know, Audrey you. And, and Harriet. And very, I mean, you I mean, you have really, you've always made us proud. We, 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 we've been in love with you for, for a very, very long time. And, and I don't even know, I, I don't even know, you know, if I could ever get you again now because I think the strategy is going to open up so wide that, you know, you might be booked for two, three years. For like, but, but, I hope so, and I hope to be with you too. Well, I, but, <laughs> well, I hope so. And, and listen, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really, I know you've, you, you know, you, 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 you've, uh, you know, you've been going through a whole bunch of stuff and you've been dealing with a whole lot of folks and a lot of everything. Thank you for taking time to come on this little radio show and, and, and talk to us and, and talk to your fans. Cause as I said before, we love you and uh, you may have finished second on the show, but you're number one in our hearts. And I hope you come back. I hope you thank come you, back. Chip. Thank you. I feel like I'm number one. And so uh, I appreciate your time and thank you for loving me. And I thank Memphis for loving me too. Uh, I appreciate everybody. Well, thank, thank you so much, Wendy. And you take care of yourself. You be safe out there. And I, I look to talk to you down the road, okay? Have a have a great 2022. Thank you. You too. All right. Thank you. Bye. Wow. What a show. What a show. Man, this has been really, really good. This is, a, this is how you kick off a new year, having a show just like this. See, Lola's shaking her head. She likes it. And Nicole likes it too. And I thank you all. Um, uh, for checking us out here tonight. I see a few faces, and as Jack plays us out of here, uh, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm always happy. This, this, is, this is the happiest I am during any week, this hour that I spend with you all. And uh, I see Audrey, I see Harriet on here, I saw Vera on here. Uh, and uh, wherever you are, whoever you are, if you check the show out, I appreciate it. I appreciate it from the heart. I truly, truly do. Let's make 2022 like the, the best year ever. Not only for Real Talk Memphis, but for you. Uh, my prayer for you is that this is the best year you have ever experienced and that God gives you everything but 10 times, 10-fold, 20-fold, 30-fold. Special thanks to all my guests tonight. Thanks to you for watching and listening. For Nicole for Lola, for Jack, my great team. Thank you all. Thank you all for being with us. And until next time, I'm Chip, and I'm out.